Now we're going to remain in the Mediterranean region. We're moving to Turkey and looking at Katohoyok. And this is a city in the Anatoly, uh, Anatolian area of southern Turkey. This is probably the first real city that we're seeing. And what we see is houses stacked into the hillside, uh, some as high as 12 building levels. So we see successive settlements. And this whole thing is built of mud brick. So what they're doing is, as buildings collapse, they're simply building on top of them. Now, an interesting aspect is when you look at it, you'll notice there are no doors. And in fact, all of the entrances would have been via the roof. The reason is they're using mud brick, which is basically dried mud with straw. It's not incredibly strong. And the weakest point in any structure is going to be the largest opening, usually a door. So by avoiding the use of doors and entering through the roof, this is going to create a situation where the buildings are stronger and they're going to last longer. But they're also defensive advantages because if someone has to come down a stairway to enter your home you can easily kill them as they do so sort of a game of thrones idea they also have a great deal of respect for the dead they're actually going to bury their dead under their homes so uncle pete will be buried under the living room and this may seem very strange but really this is showing ancestor worship uh, the importance of the ancestors. It's also telling us that families would have maintained these homes for multiple generations. They're not moving around on a regular basis. Hunting will remain significant, but the other point of significance from Katel Hoyuk is going to be the development of scenes, more specifically landscapes. The first one we're looking at is actually a deer hunt where we see two kinds of people. We see red people and black people chasing these giant deer. And the deer aren't actually gigantic at the time. We don't have 20 foot tall, 150 point bucks. What we do have is something called hierarchy of scale. In other words, something that is larger is going to be more important. In this case, the deer are the most important, so they're the largest figures in the scene. The figures themselves imply movement. They seem to be running after the deer, which is something we haven't seen in the past. Usually we see very static scenes. This one would be dynamic. It shows movement. The humans appear more frequently than what we're used to. And we're seeing this composite view of the figures where they're in different forms. They're not just in profile. Some of them are more facing us. And we see this coherent narrative. Now, the two different colors of people could be a couple of different things. It could be different races. Uh, being in Turkey, you could have people of more European descent and people of more Near Eastern descent, uh, both together being depicted by different skin tone. This could also be men and women the men in one skin tone, the women in the other, since uh, in some communities, women participated in the hunt as much as the men. We're just not entirely sure. Now, hunting what appears to be Bullwinkle is one thing. Volcanic eruptions are completely another. This is landscape with volcanic eruption, and this is the first landscape of an identifiable place. What you're seeing in the foreground at the bottom of the image is the series of what look like televisions. Those are actually the homes of Katel Hoyuk. In the background, we're seeing a volcano. And what you're seeing on the right-hand side is actually a depiction of that volcano on the wall. Uh, on top, you're seeing a recreation of what it would have looked like. And this is the first time we're seeing a volcano depicted. Now, why would you do that? Well, this is going to be a massive, unpredictable, and unstoppable force, something of great rarity, something that you're going to recognize if you're 
ancient man as a major event. Maybe the gods are angry. Maybe the gods are happy. Maybe any number of different things. This is also the first depiction of a landscape without people or animals. And it does create a coherent narrative. What we're seeing here is the volcano in the background. The lines in the sky are the ash cloud, the lightning, everything that's going on with the eruption. The people from Katohoyuk are probably seeing this from 40 or 50 miles away. They're relatively safe. They're going to see ash and such, but they're relatively safe. But they're still witnessing this incredible phenomena that they can't interpret. They haven't come across on a regular basis. So it becomes incredibly important and therefore something that they will depict in art in these murals. And by the way, these aren't the only murals in homes at Katohoyuk. These are plastered homes, so the inside would be plastered, and frequently they would paint murals on the walls, much as today.